It was a dark and stormy night, and, as cliched an opening as that is, this is exactly how Headland begins. Nor, our protagonist, awakens during a storm and cries for the help of his robot friend, Spud. Something is wrong in Headland, and Spud needs Nor's help to sort it out. The metaphysical problem, which is an excuse to plunge us into the imaginary world of Headland for an isometric action game with light RPG elements, is nothing less than the loss of imagination and creativity that young children wield so easily. Developed by Northup, Headland is aimed at all ages, especially the young, or the young at heart. An action game that provides just enough challenge to keep you engaged, but not enough to make you want to throw your switch at the wall. Headland begins without much fanfare. You're thrown right into the story, without a lot of build-up, while the tale unfolds as you play. Imagination and creativity has been stripped from Headland, and all of its inhabitants caged. Worse. Your friend Spud has an imagination core, and thus his imagination powers are destroyed and the shards are scattered across Headland. With Spud and his other robot friend's help, you have to collect and reform the core and free Headland's colourful cast of characters. Now, it's never fully explained why the bad guys, the Pale Guard, want to destroy imagination. However, it's not difficult to imagine that the pressures of growing up and adjusting to the grind of the real world is to blame for these dreams. Your adventure begins in earnest on the robot raft, your headquarters that can be customised a bit over the course of the game, where you can unlock new weapons, upgrade them, and access the world map. The levels start off small with a few hidden areas, before growing considerably larger with even more secrets to find. The game plays, as most isometric action games do, like a Diablo Lite, just without the loot drops. Instead, you'll break objects to pick up cogs, think money, as well as wood and stone with which you can unlock new weapons and upgrade them. There are special keys that open special doors, and these allow you to acquire new weapons, assuming you can survive a wave of enemies, and you can return to replay them for added crafting resources. Now Nor's repertoire of moves is small, but effective. You have a 3 combo melee attack and a dash. You can't block or jump, so you have to pay attention to enemies' choreographed attacks in order to zip out of danger at the drop of a hat. To further help you stay alive, Nor has a shield ability, which, when charged to its max by destroying enemies, also damages them when activated. Destroying your foes nets you XP, that allows you to level up, and with each level gained, you get a stat point to either increase your health or your melee damage. Each weapon you pick up comes with its own stats and abilities that can be upgraded as well. The Golden Pick, for instance, nets you more resources, while the Red Thorn lets you attack faster, but at the cost of expending some health. Now combat difficulty starts off easy enough, but it gets harder as you progress, with special enemy types and the sheer amount of enemies you have to deal with each wave increasing. It's never overwhelming though, but provides just enough challenge that, if you die, you'll know how to tackle the battle again once you respawn. The same strategy works on all waves, and the only real thing to pay attention to is making certain you don't find yourself cornered. Overall, the relative ease of combat makes for an easy title to pick up and play, that'll fill any hack and slash void you might have. Combat is solid, and coupled with the light exploration and RPG mechanics, both fun and uncomplicated. Now visually, Headland shows its status as a budget game. The graphics, while bright and colourful, are all composed of models and environments that look more at home on a last generation console than any modern hardware. The visuals do their job, and are probably aimed at younger gamers, but they don't particularly stand out. If I have one major issue with the presentation, it's the static camera the game uses, which means the environment can occasionally obscure the action. In conclusion, while Headland's visuals might not jump off the shelf at you, it's still got satisfying combat, and, coupled with light exploration and RPG mechanics, it makes for a breezy, entertaining, and ultimately cute adventure without the perils of losing your creative spark that both older and younger gamers can enjoy.